All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, our honor, and our glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone at Rootwell. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. All right, I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. Lord willing, it's edifying. And um, within this lesson, I was just meditating on a few things and doing some reading as pertaining to the acts that had taken place around the um, time of um, Esther and Mordecai. OK, when you had um, we were under subject under the Persians. All right. And in the, in the conspiracy of the tumult, tumult that had taken place um, as pertaining to Haman, Haman, the um, the Agagite. All right. I believe Haman was an, was an Agagite when you read it. Let's make sure. I know he was an Amalekite, but I think he was an Agagite as well. Yeah, yeah. Esther 3 and 1, it says, After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadoth of the Agagite. All right, which was an Amalekite. But when you go into that account that had taken place with um, Haman, he had put a petition to kill off the whole nation of Israel. And the thing about Haman was Haman is an Edomite. Okay. So the thing about it is... um. And the question that I have to you Christians that are out here, starting with vocab, all right, when we say Edomites are going to be destroyed from the face of the earth, and y'all say we're wrong for saying that, and a lot of y'all just to try to justify Esau and say that Esau is going to flourish, all the nations are going to be good, you have to look at history, man. And not only that, you have to look at prophecy, okay? Because when Haman had put a petition to kill every single last one of us, all right, all the other neighboring nations were in agreement with it. All right, and if you were alive back then, you would be in agreement with it as well. The only reason why a lot of you Christians feel that type of way, all right, because again, you've been brainwashed in this Christian dogma, all right, and that Christian dogma teaches that everybody's going to flourish. But when you actually look into the history of the scriptures, all right, the scriptures are full of a lot of blood, all right, a lot of um, destroying and definitely promotes the destroying of particular nations. All right. Even us as Israelites um, had been destroyed as a nation of people for a period of time. The only thing is through prophecy and through promise, we were to be restored. And we're going through our restoration process right now with us um, waking up um, to being who we are as a nation of people. All right. But when you look at history, there was an uh, abundance of times where you had nations that had subjugated us. All right. And as you even read in the book of Esther, you had the Edomites all right, under Haman. Wanted us destroyed as a nation of people, man. All right. So that energy exists. All right. Now, the only thing is just as Haman and his family were destroyed, the whole house of Edom is going to be destroyed, man. All right. And that's going to be after they served their slavery. But Edomites got to go. All right. It doesn't matter what you think is right, or whatever the case is. According to the scriptures. All right. Edomites are going to get put under subject for a period of time and then they're going to be destroyed and that's named what this um, lesson is going to be going into i'm going to pull up scriptures going into esau edom being destroyed all right and go into how you are the accuser of our brethren that the bible talks about you are the wicked all right it's you e so this is the book of numbers chapter 24 verse 7 okay now this is uh, a vision that um a man that went by the name of um, Balaam had, who was a who was a Moabite prophet for labor. OK. Now, when you read this here in Numbers 24 and 16, it says he had said, which heard the words of the Most High and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. All right. And the reason why he had the knowledge of the Most High, because, again, the Lord gave Balaam this vision. And you see here, it says, which saw the vision of the almighty. Why does it say almighty right here? When you go, on, I did a lesson on this um, some months back, going into almighty. And whenever you see the word almighty, what comes after it, majority of times when you read that, it is equated for a power that's going to destroy. All right. Now, there's certain scriptures where it doesn't equate that after the almighty. But when you go into that word almighty, the word there is Shadia. All right. We see God Almighty. That's Allah shot. Yeah. And when you go into that, it says almighty, most powerful. OK. 
And when you go into the word Shaddad, the root of Shadya, it says to deal violently with, to despoil, to devastate, to ruin, to destroy. Okay, so as Balaam had received this vision, what comes afterward is pretty much some destroying force once you read this vision. Okay, so he had a vision of the Almighty. Now let's keep reading this in Numbers 24 and 17. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. All right, which Balaam is having a vision of Yahawashai coming, all right, which the scriptures consider him being the scepter, a star. Some scriptures call him the branch, okay? But this is Yahawashai, Hamashiach, our savior, the son of the Most High, our brother that's going to deliver us out of this wretched captivity that we're in and deliver us out of this wretched flesh. All right. And when Yahweh Shai comes, this was going to take place. All right. Because remember, he said he had a vision of the almighty and almighty means to destroy in a very devastating fashion. OK, so it says and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. You see that all this is equated with destruction and Edom shall be a possession. All right. And who is Edom? If you can receive it. Today, Edom is the so-called white man the Bible speaks of. All right. Edom is their biblical nationality. All right. It says, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemy and Israel shall do valiantly. Now, one might ask the question, well, it says Edom. It doesn't say Edom being destroyed. It just has a possession. All right. Now, if you understand Israel and in, in, in Israel's top um, adversary, the top adversary is Edom. All right. Now, Moab is one of the top adversaries, but Moab is considered to be, um, you know, the wash our wash pot in the kingdom. All right. You read that in the book of Psalms, 60th chapter. So Moab isn't going to receive a worse judgment than Edom. Now, right here, it says that he shall smite the corners of Moab. OK, but yeah, Moab is going to be placed under subjection. OK, Edom is going to be placed under subjection as well, but they are going to be destroyed. OK, and we're going to read that later on here, but it says an Edom shall be a possession. Seir shall be a possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly out of Jacob shall come. He that shall have dominion and shall destroy himself that remaineth of the city. OK, and when he looked on Amalek, he took up this parable and said Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. All right. Now, Amalek is the chief house of Edom. And ironically, I was going into Haman, the Agagite earlier, and um, Agag or ha and Haman, they were descendants of Amalek. And Amalek right now are the so-called Jews that you see today, the people that are claiming to be the Jews that are not. Those are actually Amalekites, which are the chief house of Edom. All right. So yes, Edom is going to be a possession and Amalek is going to serve in possession as well. With the rest of their brethren when Yahawashai comes and smites the heathen. All right. But after a period of time, they're going to be destroyed. And there's nothing wrong with that because the scriptures promotes this. OK, so a lot of Christians will try to go into John 316 when they don't have understanding of what that scripture is talking about. OK, we've always had enemies and our enemies still exist today. And he's our accuser. OK, and Haman had understanding on that when he wanted us dealt with, man. All right. He had understanding on these things. He knew he was an Edomite and he knew that he was um, as pertaining to the curse of the Most High. It was going to come upon him and his family. All right. Haman wanted to destroy us as a nation of people. OK. And it almost had happened if if um, Mordecai, if Mordecai and, and, and Esther were really Esther talked to the king, talked to her husband, man. At the end of the day, it was done through the Heavenly Father. All right. That's the ultimate reason why it wasn't done. But when you read about it in the book of Esther, I write the heavenly father. I put on the spirit of Esther and Mordecai to pretty much converse with the king. And that made the king change his mind. OK, but that doesn't change the fact that Edom felt that way. And they've always felt that way. Hey, you so-called white people feel that way to this day. All right. Let's go into it in the book of Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter 35, verse five. It says, um. I will lay thy cities waste and thou shalt be desolate and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Actually, you know what? Let me start at Ezekiel 35 and 1. It says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. 
all right, in Mount Seir, synonymous for Esau, Edom, all right, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Now, who is the hand of the Most High? Who is the hand of Yahweh? That's Yahweh Shai. And we just read earlier in Numbers, the 24th chapter, that a star and a scepter was going to come out of Jacob, and he was going to put Edom in possession, and he was going to smite the corners of Moab, and he was going to um, destroy he was going to destroy and uh, allow Amalek to perish. Okay? So you read this in Ezekiel 35, and he's prophesying about this action that's to take place here within the near future. All right? It says, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand, which is Yahawashai, against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, because thou hast had perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by force, of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity it had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh, I will prepare unto thee blood, and blood shall pursue thee, and thou and thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And I will make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thy hills and in the valleys, and in all thy rivers they shall fall that are slain by the sword. Okay, now this is to happen around the time of judgment. Okay, now yes, Seir will be smitten. Okay, and even um, you read about it in Revelation, um, I believe it's in the eighth chapter, where it goes into how a third part of the men are going to be destroyed by those stars that fall, which are synonymous for those moot and those nukes. All right, and that third part of men is synonymous for Esau, Edom. Okay, now those nukes that come over here in America are going to destroy everybody here. All right, other than the elect. And other than those nobles that end up going into their bunkers, okay? And um, prophecy does have to be fulfilled that we're going to take those kings and bind them up. Let's see. And bind them up. But afterward, they will be destroyed after they serve captivity, man. All right, Psalms 149 and 8. Actually, Psalms 139, and let me start at uh, verse 6. It says, Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. All right, and this is talking about us. All right, starting with the elect, Lord, one of those men. It says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chain and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all the saints, praise your Lord. All right, now this is stuff that's written of in the Bible. Okay, these things have to happen, man. It don't matter about what you Christians, what vocab, what a lot of these guys have to say. All right. They can say anything they want to and come out of their ass. Excuse my French, but we're coming out of the doctrine. This is what the Bible says, man. All right. You have had perpetual hatred for Jacob. You Edomites, all right, have had a perpetual hatred for Jacob. And it's been like that since the womb. All right. It's been like that since you was Cain on the face of this earth. OK, you're following the serpent's footsteps. All right. As you was prophesied, as it was prophesied to be. OK. But, hey, amen. the truth of the matter is you are going to have to fall. You're going to have to serve your captivity and you got to fall. You've done too much on the planet Earth. You've destroyed the planet Earth. All right. Even under the rule of Haman, you wanted us destitute, decimated as a people. All right. And you've tried it, but now it's going to come upon your head. We read earlier in Numbers, the 24th chapter, how Yahweh is going to come and put the heathen in subjection and beat them and destroy these Edomites. And also, too, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. Okay, now this is going to be another precept here in the book of um, Obadiah. And then we're going to go into why. Let's see here. This is Obadiah chapter one. And when you read the book of Obadiah, it's a small verse, but the whole thing goes into the curse that the Lord had put against uh, to, to Esau. All right. And how he's going to be destroyed. This whole book is the prophet Obed Obadiah coming against Esau, going into the judgment that's going to take place to Esau Edom. OK, Obadiah 1 and 17, it says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. All right. Like we just read in Numbers 24th chapter, how Yahweh is going to liberate his elect. OK, and he's going to have the other nations be possessions. OK. Verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble. 
All right. And it's talking about Esau, the whole nation. Like we was reading earlier in, in um, Ezekiel 35, going, going into how Mount Seir shall be desolate and it shall perish. All right. This is equated with that. It says, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord had spoken it. All right. And this is a righteous thing, man. All right. Because did not Haman have that feeling of animosity toward us? Haman wanted this to be done to us. All right. He didn't want none of Israel remaining, period, man. All right. And yes, Haman was a so-called white man. OK, now back then when this when the, when he wanted this done, nobody had came up against him. All right. You even had the king of Persia, a harcerist that wasn't at, at um, variance with this idea. All right. You had those different neighboring nations that were made subject that were made subject under um, under harcerist, those different princes. They didn't they didn't object to this. All right. Through the spirit of the Most High, all right, they, this wasn't done, okay? Through the spirit of the Most High, this wasn't done, and Haman and his house ended up being destroyed instead, okay? Now, the thing about it is today, all right, when you read it in the scriptures, really, when you go into the prophecy and look at what we preach today as pertaining to the prophecy, there's nothing wrong with us saying what's going to take place to Edom, all right? You Christians can come against it all you want, but just the truth of the matter is, Hey, man, what we saying coming is coming right out of the book. This has to happen. This has to be fulfilled and it's going to be fulfilled, man. There's going to be none remaining in the house of E in the house of Esau Edom. And that's just the truth, because when you look at his existence and I even brought up the example with Haman. All right. He wanted us dead. He literally accused us, man. All right. And that was a mere example on how the Edomites felt about us, man. OK, now I was reading the book of um, Josephus. All right. I'm going into Haman. All right. And when you read that going into Haman, let me see if I can find it, actually. Let's see here. Yeah, this is it right here. OK, now I'm going to read this part of the antiquity of the Jews. In the past few of my lessons have been in, inspired by what I've been reading in the Josephus. All right. But um, this here inspired me to do this lesson. So I'm going to read this here. In Josephus, and it's in um, what chapter is it? This is in the sixth chapter, okay. Going into pretty much from the history for those of y'all that have Josephus from the history of the death of, death of Cyrus to him, Alexander. All right, now this is in the sixth chapter, and I'm going to read the fifth part. And it says, Now there was Haman, the son of Amadatha, by birth an Amalekite. All right. That used to go into the king and the foreigners of the Persians to worship him. So Artaxerxes has commanded that such honor should be paid to him. Now remember uh, when he read it in the book of um, Esther. Okay. Haman wanted to be worshipped. Okay. Now it says. But Mordecai was so wise and so observant of his own country's laws. That he would not worship the man. All right. Because again. All right. What do you when you go into the law, the Ten Commandments, what is one of the ten? It says thou shalt not worship any gods before me. All right. And that was literally going to be a violation of that law. If Mordecai was to bow down unto this man and worship him. OK, it says, but Mordecai was so wise and so observant of his country's laws that he would not worship the man. When Haman observed this, he inquired when he came and when he understood that he was a Jew, he had indignation at him. So Haman, when he understood that Mordecai, it wasn't even the fact that Mordecai didn't worship under him. All right. Now, of course, he had some type of animosity toward it. But when he read it here, when he found out that Mordecai was an Israelite. All right. That's when he had that indignation. That's when that indignation was fulfilled within him. All right. Because of that perpetual hatred that Esau always had for Jacob, even until the beginning, because ultimately Haman understood that we got the birthright. All right. And him being of the house of Edom. And who knows what scrolls that they had, all right, what documentation that they had, all right, but pretty much within the history, he understood that Esau had had hatred for his brother Jacob because of the birthright. So that hatred didn't change. It didn't change back around the time of Haman. And we see today it hasn't changed now, all right? These elites understand that blessing. They understand that we have that blessing. That's why they want to come against us. And that's why they've been coming against us for, for periods of time, for a long period of time. Because they understand that we are the children of the Most High. All right. The blessing pertains to us, starting with Yahweh Shai and the elect that are going to rule under him. All right. 
Let's keep reading this in Josephus. It says, when Haman observed this, he inquired when he came. And when he understood that he was a Jew, he had indignation at him and said within himself, what whereas the Persians who were free men and worshipped him, but this man who was no better than a slave does not vouch to do so. And when he desired to punish Mordecai, he thought to do small thing to request the king that he alone might be punished, but rather determined to abolish the whole nation. And when you go into that word abolish, it goes into destroy. So Haman wanted the whole nation of Israel be, to be destroyed. All right. It says, for he was naturally an enemy to the Jews because he was an Edomite, because the nation of the Amalekites, which is the chief house of Edom, of which he said had been destroyed by them. And check this out. Accordingly, he came to the king and accused them, saying, this is a certain wicked nation. All right. So he had went to the king and said he accused us and said that we were a wicked nation. All right. And this is an ongoing thing. You had even the other nations, especially around the time of the Persians that constantly harassed us and wanted to accuse us. And Esau, Esau, I'm sorry, Esau, Edom being the head of those heathen nations that accused us. All right. You even had around the time when they destroyed when they destroyed their Jerusalem around the time of Nebuchadnezzar. What did Edom say? What was in the spirit of Edom? All right. Let's read this here in the book of Psalms 137. Psalms chapter 137. In six, it says, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. All right. And David was actually prophesying of a future event because the destruction of Jerusalem had taken place well after David existed. But we understand David was a king, but he was also a prophet. OK, so here he's literally prophesying how Esau destroyed us around the time of Jerusalem. All right. It says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it to the foundation thereof. All right. And that was the, on the spirit of the Edomites. When they said, raise it, raise it, that literally goes into destroying everything, the walls, everything as pertaining to Jerusalem and the temple. All right. And that was in the spirit of those Edomites when they had been given a leeway from Nebuchadnezzar to do that. All right. So Haman had came in that same energy as Esau Edom. All right. And this is an example of them accusing us before the most high. All right. Because that's what they did. They always came to us in the form of wanting to accuse us. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah chapter 50. And I brought this out of my last lesson, too. And this is pertaining to Esau Edom. man. when you read when you read about this matter of fact, this is a, this is the account. This is Jeremiah chapter 50. It says the. Jeremiah 51, it says, the word that Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet, declare ye among the nations. All right, now this is, um, this is a prophecy is concerning Babylon, but when you read this, this is pertaining to mystery Babylon and not ancient Babylon when you read this. Now there are certain clues and indicators when you read this that did take place in ancient Babylon, but at the end of the day, this chapter in Jeremiah 50 was not fulfilled around the time of the destruction of ancient Babylon. This is going to be fulfilled under the destruction of mystery Babylon or the daughter of Babylon, which is Esau Edom. How do we know that? Let's jump back to Psalms 137 and 7. It says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even the foundations thereof. O daughter of Babylon, right here, he's calling Esau Edom the daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. OK, so Esau, Edom, the daughter of Babylon, which really is America, their pride and joy. All right. But it says, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. All right. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. All right. Because that's the mind state that these Edomites had toward us. And they did fulfill that toward us. But that's going to return upon their own heads. All right. So let's jump back to Jeremiah 50. It says the word of Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by the prophet Je um, by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Bel is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there cometh a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. All right, now, if you believe this is talking about ancient Babylon, when Cyrus had came, all right, and had taken the Babylonians over, 
Cyrus still had people living in Babylon. There were still Israelites that lived in the land of Babylon. Cyrus was the king over Babylon after this had taken place. Babylon wasn't destroyed after this. All right. There were still man and beast that lived there. They didn't depart, which goes to show you that this isn't talking about when Cyrus had came. All right. Verse four says in those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come and the children of Judah together. All right. Now, this is pertaining to Cyrus. The children of Israel and the children of Judah didn't come together. All right. You had the children of Judah that did come out of Babylon. Only a remnant of them came out of Babylon and they started to build the second temple. All right. But you still had the northern kingdom that was dispersed in the western hemisphere of the planet Earth around that time. All right. It says in those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come and the children of Judah together going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord, their God. And that's taking place right now. OK, it says, and they shall ask the way of Zion with their faces did the word saying, come and let us join ourselves to the Lord and a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. That's what we're doing right now. Verse six, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. And they have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from the mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. And yes, we have been scattered. But this is the key point why I wanted to go into in verse 7. Going into how these, these Edomites had accused us, man. Just as Haman had accused us, the king of Harsaris, that we didn't bow down to him. He's constantly accusing us until he wants us destroyed, man. All right. This is Jeremiah 50 and 7. All that found them have devoured them. And their adversaries said, we have offended not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord and hope of their fathers. All right. So this is another example of these people, our adversaries, starting with Esau, Edom, accusing us. OK, they've always accused us. They've always tried to use certain reasons of our history and things that we've done to transgress against the Lord and try to use that as a green light to come up against us and destroy us. All right. Even when you read about it, how we were getting ready to build the second temple, you had those heathen that wanted to help us and we rejected it. And they wrote letters to the king and accused us on why we shouldn't build the temple. All right. The same thing with Haman. All right. When we didn't bow down to Haman, Haman, what? He accused us. All right. And he had wrote a letter unto the king. OK. And that spirit is still in these Edomites today, still in these Edomites today. That didn't change. OK. This man is the accuser of our brethren. OK, this is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. This is the man that has to be destroyed. This is the daughter. This is the house. This is the, this is Esau Edom, man. All right. That represents the daughter of Babylon in Psalms 137. All right. With their pride and joy being America, which was a key nation. I'm sorry, a key country. All right. That they had went over and thrived in and punished the children of Israel due to us transgressing against the Lord. They really wanted to fulfill that anger that Esau Edom had from the beginning and that Haman wanted to fulfill when you read about it in the book of Esther. All right. This is them. And they have to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. OK, you can't change what prophecy says about these people. You can't change it. These men are destroyed and then salvation is going to come. All right. Remember earlier in the book of Numbers, the 24th chapter, what was read was that a star was going to rise out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and he shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly. This is pertaining to our salvation. As we get delivered, our enemy Esau Edom that's going to start with them are going to get brought down. And after that, they're going to be completely destroyed. Because Obadiah has to be fulfilled where it says the house of Jacob shall be a fire and Joseph a flame and Esau shall be for stubble and none shall be remaining in the house of Esau. This has to take place. All right. Hey, man, when this prophecy in Numbers 24th chapter takes place. All right. This is pertaining to our salvation. All right. Matter of fact, let me get this in Revelation, Revelation 12 and 10. And I'm going to end it off on here. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying. Let me see here. Revelation 12 and 9, it says the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. 
he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. Now, this is pertaining to the wicked. This ain't talking about the spiritual demon Satan right here, man. This is pertaining pertaining to the wicked. OK. And what it says, cast down, cast, cast out into the earth. All right. This is an example of them being brought down. All right. You read about it in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, where it goes into how thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. And it says what? It says worms spread under thee and worms spread over thee, meaning that they are going to be in that low state. They are cast down to the earth. This is an example of Esau Edom being humbled, being brought down. Like we read in Numbers 24th chapter, that was an example of Yahweh Shai having to come, all right, and cast that nation down to the earth, okay, meaning that they were going to be humbled. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is salvation come and strength in the kingdom of our power. And when is that going to take place? When Yahweh Shai comes, when that scepter and that star comes out of Jacob, that was written of in Numbers the 24th chapter. All right. When Yahweh Shai comes in his glory, that's pertaining to our salvation. It says in strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before the most high day and night. All right. In ways that they accused, they've accused us before the most high. You read it in Jeremiah 50, chapter seven. All right, how they try to justify what they've done to us by looking at the things that we've done to transgress against the Lord. All right, an example with Haman. All right, how when Mordecai didn't want to bow down to him, he went and wrote a letter to King Ahasuerus that not only Mordecai was destroyed, but the whole nation was destroyed. And that's what Haman wanted to do. All right, and to a degree, they wanted to fulfill that when they came over to the Americas and brought us over in these slave ships. All right. And ultimately, they're going to try to destroy us before the great and dreadful day. When you read about it in Isaiah, where it says, when the enemy coming up against us like a, like a flood, then the Lord's going to lift that standard. All right. So it's obvious that these people want us dead. All right. These people want us destroyed. And it's amazing how you have people that are alive today that really think that the Lord isn't going to do this to a particular people. When you look in history, that the, if the Lord destroyed his, if the Lord did this to his chosen people, if the Lord crucified his own son, all right, had his own son beat and had his election, they're going to suffer the same things that Yahweh suffered. If the Lord is willing to do all this toward the Israelites, to those that he loved, why would he not? Why would he not want to destroy the other nations that came up against them? It makes no sense, you know. So, yes, man, the Lord is going to destroy this nation of ease, Edom. All right. They're going to serve in captivity and they're going to be obliterated, man. And that's just the truth. The accuser of our brethren is going to be brought down, man. He's going to be brought low. You had all these times in history where they've came against us, conspired against us certain times. Hey, like Haman, for example, hey, he ended up going on the gallows and his family. So we had a victory there. But there's certain times when Edomites that came up against us and destroyed us as a people. You know, look at Antiochus and look what he did to Jerusalem. OK. You have examples of them. Look at look at what had taken place when Nebuchadnezzar came. He had those Edomites destroy the city when they said, raise it, raise it. OK, so if the Lord did this to his chosen people, best believe he has heavy indignation coming to those that he hates. And it's just true, you know. So I'm going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone at Ruel. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking us word in sincerity and in truth. Shabbat shalom.